Hey, good morning, everybody. But today's what, Thursday? Thursday, December 24th. Yeah, the 22nd. Hopefully, everybody had a good day. Or the best day you could possibly have. What, three more days until Christmas? Three more days. Three more days. Nice morning, man. Miles says it's cold, but I don't think so. That is why the people get sick because of this weather. Yeah. But at daytime, cold at night. I mean, the, the nights are nice, man. I slept last night with no air con. A little fan on low, just enough the air movement. I was all good. I slept, actually, I slept really good last night. I slept throughout the night. My, my chest is... Well, you got that cold, too. I, I went out, check my blood pressure is hot. Yeah. Yeah, I figure I, I share a true story. I've been talking to this guy. He doesn't live in this area. He lives somewhere else. And uh, I'm not gonna, what we'll call him his name, I'll call him John. But for private, because it was a private conversation. But I did ask him, hey, can I bring this up in one of my videos? He doesn't care. I said, I just won't tell you your name or where you're at. For, you know, for personal reasons. But uh, it's good. <laughs> He's, a, he's about my age. No, it's not funny. It's just, I see it. I see it happen here at times. But um, okay, he uh, he got introduced. He used to fly back and forth, you know, for vacation to Manila and Cebu, places like that. And he had got introduced to this woman who's, I believe he was telling me, is something like 30 years younger than him. He thought he hit it good, you know what I mean by that. He thought he, he got the really good end of the deal. Well, through the, through the time, he said they were talking back and forth between his visits. And uh, he said that it's... it's Something always came up, you know, and a family emergency, I guess you would call it. Uh, so this, you know, this person was in the hospital, that person, you know, was in a motorcycle accident or this or that. It's always like one thing after another. And he said like a fool, he would send him money. Well, he decided he was gonna, you know, he had a, he had a good retirement and everything like that, and he decided, well, you know, it's time for me. Oh, the fence is down. But that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. The fence could be down, but there's the stalls could still be empty. You know what I mean? I mean, it's nice. Wonder how the wiring's got tore. Wire got tore down. I'll get back to my story in a minute. Well, now that got to it. Okay, it's nice to see them making progress. Yeah. Got the got the wall, the wall all piled up. It's nice to see them making progress. Well, anyway, so he comes here for permanent reasons, and uh, he didn't have any intentions of getting married. Okay. He, he went through a, a few years back, he went through a really nasty divorce, and he was like, I'm done. I'm married, okay. He said next week. Next week, okay. They just removed the fence, the iron roof, because 
the wind yesterday. Oh, the wind, yeah. It's fell down. So he comes here and it's just, he told me it was just, for him, it was kind of overwhelming. It was just one thing after another. Oh, we need to build a house. And he was like, well, why didn't you say something before I came here? You know? Because I had, you know, I, I was working. I had money coming in, you know? It wouldn't have been such a gouge on, on my, uh, my, my savings or my retirement. So he built a house. A lot of promises were made as far as the size and style of the house and he says that none of them came about so basically he's living in a box he said there's basically two rooms there's the bedroom and then a he says, I don't know what you want to call it, a great room, a combined room, or whatever. Hey, he's not very happy of the result and results. And he said as much as he paid, he, he would figure he'd get better than that. But the funny thing is, he says, come find out, the people who built his house were all family, her family. <laughs> yeah, so he says he feels that he got basically the short end of the stick. And I'm sorry this interruption, man. But he says that uh, he's been here going on a year, living permanently. And he says not, not a day goes by when a family emergency comes up or somebody needs this. Somebody needs that. He said, he went out and bought a motorcycle, you know, for him and his wife and going in and out of town. He lives out in the middle of like nowhere. And uh, one night, unknown to him, one of her brothers took the motorcycle and totaled it. He was drinking, totaled his motorcycle, and uh, basically has done nothing about it. He hasn't tried to get it fixed. The brother hasn't tried to get it fixed or anything like that, but they keep on asking him, when is he gonna buy another motorcycle when he says he's not. I'll take a twice to go into town. Is any time that him and his girlfriend come up with plans to go somewhere, they seem to one way or another to find out about it and they kind of invite themselves, but they don't pay for anything. Deep pocket short arms. Now he, I asked him, I said, well, since you're not married, I said, do you have any children with her? And he says, nope. And he says, and I, I won't. And I was like, I was like dude, <laughs> she's, gonna, she's gonna want a child. And he goes, well, then she needs to go somewhere else. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, I had a fat sec to me about 10 years ago, man. I can't have kids. He says, after the birth of his, his second child with his ex-wife, he, he said he didn't want any more children and he got a fat sec to me. So he says, I, and I know I'm shooting blanks. Cause I ain't worried about that. So if she comes to me and says I'm pregnant, she's been sleeping with somebody else. I said, well, have you told her? And he says, no, I haven't told her anything to her. I haven't said a word. I said, okay. But he is, he tells me that, you know, some of his clothes have disappeared. His wife or his girlfriend would wash them, hang up in line and all of a sudden they're gone. Hello. Wash them, put them up on the line, they're gone. He says there's times where they go to the market, they'll come home, put stuff in the refrigerator, leave, come back, and half the, half the shit's gone. 
He says, but it, he says the funny thing is, man, they just every time they they think I'm a uh, I got this ne never ending cash flow. He goes, he goes by all means, I am not rich. He goes, I only got two thousand two thousand dollars to come in come every month for my retirement. He goes, and plus my savings. He goes, and I ain't spending no more money out of my savings. But he says the the problem is, and I feel, is that the family's always pressuring her, his girlfriend, for shit, for stuff. And uh, <clears throat> he said, there's always something, something emergency. He was telling me one story where they had supposedly this aunt. Hey. Supposedly this aunt that lives somewhere else. He says I have he goes this is the first I ever heard about her and they always talk about people Then all of a sudden She had to get major surgery and you know and since he was with his daughter who you know he needs to contribute 50,000 pesos And he was like well, how much is everybody else putting in? And he got nothing got an answer. In other words, this this Ann, if she actually exists, he'd be paying for all the medical. And he basically told his the girlfriend, I'm like, no, I ain't paying enough for him. But now he's like the bad guy, you know. I'm just telling you, man, you gotta watch yourselves. You gotta watch yourself. Don't put up with people's bullshit. A lot of people, and I'll say it all, there's a lot of good Philippine people here. A lot. Okay, unfortunately, you got the few that spoil the bunch. All right, and the only thing you, need, you are to them is the foreigner with the fat wallet. <laughs> That's all you are to them. You know? And I'm pretty sure that you, you have heard other horror stories, man. Yeah. Poor thing. Oh, they got him chained. He's chained up and he does not like it. <laughs> All right, man. Like I said, man, you, I'm not here to tell people what to do. I just, and I'm not, you know, I don't give a, I really don't like to give advice, you know. I only talk about the sh stupid shit that I have done. And like this guy says, he says in the stupid shit that he's doing, he likes people to learn from it so they don't make the same mistakes and fall down that pit of hell. He calls it the pit of hell. He does plan on that things don't get better, which he doubt it really will. He says he does plan on leaving. He said he'll cut his losses and go away. So, you know, much, and if he's watching, man, you know, it happens, dude, it happens to everybody, man. Not everybody. It happens to a few people where they got a kind heart and people take advantage of it. You know, and I'm not saying, man, everybody here, like I said, I'm not saying everybody in the Philippines is a scam. No. But like I said, you got your bad apples. And it's usually the jealous ones, man. You know, how dare you have something I don't have. They make your life a living hell. So I'll let you go for now. You be good to yourself, be good to each other. Talk to you another day. Bye for now.